Recently I upgraded my gaming PC to a Ryzen 5 3600 CPU and after doing a bit of homework it seemed that the best way to get the best results without too much hassle was to enable PBO and Auto OC within the BIOS. So that's basically what I did. After a few weeks of using my PC I managed to get a few hours during the day to myself so I decided to start tweaking the uh, settings within the BIOS. So I reduced the voltage, I messed around with the uh, timings of the DDR4 memory and I overclocked the CPU. And about three days later I pretty much finished messing around with my PC. So it turned into quite the chore at the end of the day but I did enjoy it. But once I pretty much finished messing around with the PC, I did wonder was all of that effort actually worth it? So that's what this video is about. I've done a few benchmarks, I've created a few graphs, I've tried to make it a bit more professional and uh, yeah, we're going to see if actually overclocking your uh, CPU and messing around with the settings and spending all that time is actually worth it over just enabling PBO and Auto OC within the BIOS. So let's have a look. So this is my gaming PC, it's a Ryzen 5 3600, we've got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 MHz Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM and we've got an NVIDIA GTX 1080 and an Asus Prime X570 Pro motherboard. So a couple things to note here, it's a balanced system, a Ryzen 5 3600 goes very well with GTX 1080 and secondly yes the X570 Pro is probably a bit of an overkill for the Ryzen 5 3600 but that's because I've left myself lots of room for upgrades in the future so maybe I'll be getting a 3900X or even a 4900X. So these are the test settings I used for the benchmarks. We've got the stock BIOS settings. So this is if you built a PC, turned it on and did nothing in the BIOS. Then we have PBO plus Auto OC plus XMP, otherwise known as DCOP. And then we have manual settings. I did start off with 4.3 gigahertz all core overclock, but I believe 4.2 gigahertz anyone can achieve. And to be honest, it would be better for a long-term usage. And then we've got the voltage at 1.3125 volts and the manual time as well. This was the best I could do with the uh, RAM sticks that I had, any lower, and the system would not boot. Okay, so the first benchmark is Cinebench R15. And as you can see, the difference between PBO and stock BIOS settings, well, there's not that much difference. But with the manual settings, there's quite a jump. So uh, we're off to a good start. So let's have a look at CPU-Z. So here with CPU-Z or CPU-Z for our American friends, we've got a nice 12 point jump with the single core uh, score between manual settings and PBO. And as you can see, there is quite a hefty jump for the all core score. So once again, things are looking good. On to a couple of gaming benchmarks. We've got Dirt Rally here, high settings 1080p. And you can see that manual settings and PBO has a higher minimum frame rate than stock BIOS. That is once again mirrored with the average frame rate. But when we jump to the maximum frame rate, you can see that there's a nice jump between PBO and the manual overclock of 4.2 gigahertz. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, high settings, 1080p. Now we only have the average frame rate here, unfortunately. But once again, as you can see, stock BIOS settings are certainly nowhere near as good as PBO or manual settings. Manual settings just taking the lead. The last game I benchmarked, Gears of War 5, high settings, 1080p with the ultra textures installed. And as you can see, the bottom 5% average minimum, we've got 83 on PBO. And with manual settings, we've got 95 frames per second. So that's quite the jump. And a similar jump with the average frame rate, 111 compared to 117. So this game really, really does take advantage of all the resources thrown at it. We're not really GPU bound uh, at this point, so the CPU can really stretch its legs. So it does seem that overclocking your CPU and spending time tweaking all the settings within the BIOS does still make, in this day and age, a nice difference. But while benchmarking the suite of games and Cinebench and so forth, I did keep an eye on the temperature of the CPU package. 
And well, I think this is the most in interesting graph. So let's have a look at this. So as you can see here, we just peaked at 69 degrees with the overclock. And this was achieved because of the lower voltage. So with PBO enabled, we hit 77 degrees while benchmarking. So not only have we achieved higher clocks, a faster CPU, which achieves higher frame rates, higher benchmark scores, but we've got a much cooler CPU, which basically means a more stable PC, a quieter PC. So yeah, overall, it's been a really good result as far as I'm concerned. And uh, hopefully if you're deciding whether to put the time in to overclock your PC, hopefully this will help you make the decision. So there we go. I hope that's helped someone somewhere out there. So if you like the video, please subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.